I'm Deborah Tornovan. Welcome to our show. Today, this South Florida profile is on the Community Foundation for Palm Beach and Martin Counties. Although Palm Beach and Martin Counties are regions of great abundance and beauty, we have some real challenges. According to the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, the two counties produce over a billion dollars annually in agricultural products, and yet so many people in our community go to bed hungry. In 2014, a staggering 57% of our Palm Beach children relied on school meal programs as their main source of food. And it's so hard to believe that only 71% of our students in Palm Beach County graduate high school. On any given day, over 2,500 people are homeless in Palm Beach County alone. Many of them are families with school-aged children. It saddens me to learn our foster care system is in crisis with far too many children without representation. We are here today at the Center for Philanthropy, home of the Community Foundation for Palm Beach and Martin County, whose goal is to meet the challenging needs of the communities they serve. Today, the foundation has surpassed $100 million in grants and scholarships, and they are making a difference. My special guest is Bradley Herbert, President and CEO of the Community Foundation for Palm Beach and Martin Counties. Brad, thank you so much for being here with us today. I know that the foundation is so busy and that you have a lot of work to do, um, but taking the time today is important so our viewers can really see what you're doing in the community, how it all began, and you know, where, the, where the foundation is going. Thank you for having me. Let's start from the very beginning. I know it started in 1972, the Community Foundation. At the time, it was just for Palm Beach County. Let's talk a little bit about the history and some of the people that were involved from the very beginning. Well, uh, in 1972, Winsome and Michael McIntosh actually made the first contribution to start the, the Community Foundation. And uh, Michael, I think Dad was ill, and they had moved here to kind of help him out, and that they had a foundation. Well, Winsome and Michael McIntosh kind of looked at the community and looked for community leadership to really uh, get it started. Uh, his father actually died, and they were trying to figure out how to give away money in a community they didn't know. Mm -hmm. So the first thing they did is, uh, let's start a community foundation. So as a way really to get to know the community and actually help with their philanthropy as well. Right, and they had a lot of great examples because the community foundation is not unique to Palm Beach County, it's all over the United States. That's so right. it was a wonderful resource for them to kind of pull from and perfect match for the Palm Beach community at the time. You know, community foundation started in 1914. First community foundation was in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was a great model. Uh, a bank, people would leave money to the trust department, say, you know, take care of the library, take care of the local school, take care of this, you know, charity or this uh, issue in the community. And the bank said, wait a minute, we're in the business of banking. Why are we doing right. all this work? So they actually set up the first community foundation. Right. And, and it's just such a great model all over the country. And at the time, what was its mission? What was the main goal at, at you know, in the 1970s? What was sure. its main purpose? I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Winston McIntosh actually last fall. And uh, I asked her that same question. And one of the things that kind of struck me was she wanted to make sure, she said, you know, some of the organizations have this great staff, this long legacy tradition, but there are a lot of new organizations starting out in the community that do great work, but they might not have the resources to really to get off the ground. And right. she really wanted, saw the Community Foundation as a way to really help everybody in the community, not just the really successful, um, well-known not-for-profits, but also this maybe struggling new and innovative so really a place where you could take a chance with your philanthropy. Exactly. And were John and Catherine MacArthur very involved in the beginning as well? The MacArthur Foundation mm -hmm. was really instrumental in the early days. They would put forth challenge grants to build the assets of the foundation. And that really, really got other people involved. So to our viewers who are not familiar with the Community Foundation, you basically have a fund that is set up to then allocate resources to local nonprofit organizations to help them to have sustainability in our community. Right, and one of the kind of the primary way a community foundation works is the idea is you make a contribution and it's endowed, meaning it's going to last forever. Mm -hmm. So the way the money is invested, it's invested to um, provide money for today, but also a little bit of in the growth, so that you know ten years from now, the the fund might be worth you know twice as much as it, as it is today, so that more money can go back to the community. How do you get your funding today? How, how do you go out into the community and how do you sustain your, your funding so that you can then allocate it to local organizations? Well, I think one of our great challenges is that many people don't know who the, who the community foundation is or what it is and what it does. So my big challenge as I come here uh, is to get the word out. So thank you for having us on your program today. 
There is an opportunity with the community foundation to support the entire community. Uh, you may have a particular interest and you may want to give to one organization, but in particular if you want to uh, give to multiple organizations, the community foundation can be a resource to learn about the community. We have an online catalog of not-for-profit organizations. If you're a not-for-profit organization, you should definitely be on our catalog. We always go to the catalog first whenever there's an opportunity to fund anything. Mm -hmm. um, and for individuals, we really one of the biggest ways we've grown is by bequest. People have actually left money in their estate to the community foundation. One of the first uh, uh, bequests that we received actually doubled the assets, I think, of the foundation at the time was about $300,000 bequest that is now worth over half a million and that has provided $300,000 to the community. And one of the beauties of the community foundation is it's a way to uh, start something that will go on forever and it's, it's not going to be stagnant, it's going to grow. And also grow with the changing needs of whatever organization it is that the people want to. Like you were mentioning to me before we were on camera, some of the organizations may you know, find a cure for something that they were doing research for. So th this really helps a donor to take their gift and make sure it's allocated properly too. So it's a, it's a good resource for someone who is philanthropic. Right. And if it's a real legacy gift, something you want to last beyond your lifetime in, in, in an honor of a loved one or a family member, or then you can know that that will live beyond. Even if, uh, if there's a cure to the uh, disease that you wanted to support, it can still go on and, and help other, other diseases. Absolutely. You can, you can figure that out right at the beginning. Tell us why they should give you the funding, the Community Foundation of Palm Beach and Martin County, rather than giving the, the funds directly to the cause. Well, I think uh, I would never tell anyone not to give directly to a cause. If that's mm -hmm. your interest, you should do that. But there's, sometimes there are situations where it makes sense to use the Community Foundation, um, especially in the situation where if it's going on forever in an endowment kind of a situation, then you know that it's going to be there forever. I've heard of instances where people leave a million dollars to an organization and everybody has the greatest of intentions, but five years later that million dollars is gone. If it goes to the Community Foundation, it will be there for eternity. In fact, it will be, it'll grow. It won't just be there. So it's like a gift that keeps giving, actually, That's which is really wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And you have made such a difference. So many of the nonprofits locally really have counted on you, and many of them survive because of your funding. So tell us about some of the partners that you have, some of the people that you really are helping to and are making a difference. I think a good example, um, there was a real need in this community for food, mm -hmm. uh, food distribution. Um, and I think the folks at the Community Foundation and other organizations in the in our, in our area came together to look at the issue and find a solution. And with the help of everyone else who was involved, the food bank came out of um, that work. And I think that was a really good example of how the Community Foundation right. can take an issue and, and, and really improve it for everybody. Right, because I don't think our viewers know. I mean, a lot of us live in this little bubble because South Florida is so beautiful. I don't think they really understand what is happening many times in our community uh, because it's hard, it's hard to hear. Um, I want to I read some things to our viewers so they understand the impact that you're actually having. Um, over 1,700 children in Palm Beach County School District are homeless, 1,700 children. In Palm Beach County, over 50% of the children require meal plans for school. So if they're not eating at school, if it's summertime, we don't know how these children are eating. And the number increases to over 95% of the students in Belle Glades require food assistance. Um, it is estimated that over 200,000 can't afford their housing costs, which leaves little or no funds left for food, and many households are going hungry. So since so many children are going to bed hungry and people in South Florida you know, are, are actually dealing with issues of, of lack of food, tell us what your organization is doing to really help address not only the hunger issues but also the housing problems. Well, I think where we really can be helpful is when we bring other people together. You know, collaborative efforts really make a difference in this community. And we were able to bring together multiple funders and all come together really as, as one group to really address these issues and make a really big difference with the, with the food bank. And the great thing about the foundation is that people don't only give money, but they give advice and they give services and they get on board and really help out and, and get their hands dirty, so to speak. So I think that's a wonderful part of it. I I'd spoke to some of the people at the food bank and they were saying that you know your increased funds has really made a tremendous difference to their organization. And I, I don't know, do, you know if they would survive really without your help. So I think you are making such a difference there. Well, and I'm, I'm just 
thrilled with the leadership Harry Borman uh, is providing the community with the food bank. I mean, he's taken that organization in two years and just taken it beyond what I think we, any of us thought was possible. So. But you and I have been here so many years, and it's so sad to see that we, we have such changing needs in our community, that we are addressing these problems of homelessness and of hunger. Um, I, I don't know if the Community Foundation has seen a transition in this problem, or if this is something they've always dealt with. Can you tell, can you tell me if the Community Foundation finds that their mission has little changes in it, or is the goal really the same, just to, to impact the community? I really think the mission is the same. I think we really want to support the community. I think needs will Will continue to surface. Mm -hmm. The needs will get greater and greater. The, our community is growing. I think statistics show that we're going to be approaching two million people in the next 10 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I really feel a great sense of urgency to build our assets so we can serve these needs. And how do you do that? Really one of the best ways is to set up a fund at the Community Foundation and there are a couple of ways to do it. You can do it a fund that gives money every year uh, donor advised funds and then a lot of people will actually set up a fund that will last beyond them. They can do it through their will or they can do it with assets they have right now. Kind of a and legacy. can they earmark their gift towards causes that they feel you know an affiliation to? Absolutely and we make we really take great care in talking to the donor about what do you really want to accomplish. You know I hear of, I've heard of stories where people have left a million dollars to an organization and five years later that million dollars is gone. The organizations have great intentions, but the money is gone. If they gave it to the Community Foundation, that million dollars would be worth more than a million dollars. Mm -hmm. We had a gentleman who left $85,000 to us in 1988. That 88000 has now grown to 200000 mm -hmm. We've given out $200,000 since that gift was made. So that's the power of endowment in the Community Foundation. Why should they call you rather getting, than giving a gift directly? Well, I think it depends on the situation. Uh, it depends on your relationship with the organization you're thinking about. Uh, if you have a particularly strong relationship with one particular organization, you may feel comfortable leaving that money to that organization. But you know, over time, things change. One thing that is nice about the Community Foundation is that we are here to be here forever. So if that organization happens to go away, if a need changes, if, if, a, if a disease is cured, we can set up in the agreement initially so that that money will continue to help the community in the best way possible in the, in the, way, that you, in the way you wanted it to happen. Right, so it takes you through the time of that organization and their and maybe changes. Beyond. Exactly. And maybe beyond. It's wonderful. Yeah. So what are you most proud of at the Community Foundation? What do you feel that you're really doing to make the most impact in our community? Well, I've been in kind of the fundraising realm and not-for-profit world since most of my career, colleges and universities, and most recently public television. Yes. But um, We welcome you for on yeah. public television, so <laughs> thank, thank you. you. But I think as I've been in the not-for-profit world, I've always thought a community foundation made the most sense. It just makes sense to have an organization in your community that doesn't have an agenda. We don't have any uh, particular cause or interest that we've uh, focusing on, we really are focusing on the community and also the interests of the people who are donating to the Community Foundation. So it just, it's a thrill for me at this point in my life to be able to work with an organization on the not-for-profit side that does exactly what I think should happen. The gift of giving is just such a wonderful thing. So you, you have that, that part of it I think must feel really, really good. And really the best part are the people, mm -hmm. always. You know, it's a relationship business and uh, you know, I always say in real estate, it's location, 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 but in, in a not-for-profit world, it's relationships. Absolutely. Always relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Brad, I've been doing a lot of stories on foster care, dealing with a lot of the organizations in our community, and I know that the foster care system is in crisis in Palm Beach County right now. Tell us how the Community Foundation is addressing those needs of those children um, and how you're impacting the, their community and their lives. Yeah, I think uh, one area is just in foster care in general. We've been uh, supporting that area over the last few years, especially with Place of Hope. I think they've done a particularly good job. And then recently the legislature passed a new law which um, allowed children from 18 to 21 to actually stay in the system. So that's right. been a new area. Right, they don't uh, age out anymore exactly. at 18. Exactly, that was a real, was, real problem before. So we've been addressing that through our grants and, and the work we've been doing. Mm -hmm. It's hard enough being 18, mm -hmm. but being 18 as a foster child. Absolutely, really yeah. So that's, that's been a big concern of uh, so many people in our community. How do you decide which organization gets funding as opposed to one that you know perhaps does not? There are a couple of ways. Um, 
always going back to the donor. Donors have particular interests, and when they give us money, sometimes they dictate how that money should be spent. So that determines some. We also um, ask organizations for proposals mm -hmm. and uh, weigh those proposals on merits and, and uh, criteria that we put together. And then we actually have a volunteer board that looks at all those uh, proposals and makes decisions mm -hmm. for the community. There's um, one of the challenges is we can't support everything. Of course We're always not. looking for where can we make the biggest impact for mm -hmm. the least amount of money. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to just give to those that are safe. We want to make, take a chance once, a while, once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, one of my big challenges coming here is, you know, we, we have a lot of money. It looks like a lot of money. But when you start figuring out how much of that can we really spend on different things, it just all of a sudden it's, it's never enough. Of course. One thing that excites me is the Great Give that we're doing. Yes. Um, Let's talk about that a little bit. It's called the Great Give. Great Give. Okay. It's a 24-hour giving uh, period of time. We're going to encourage the whole community to give to the not-for-profit of their choice. Mm -hmm. And we actually have put together a pool of matching dollars. And uh, that, those gifts will be uh, matched up on a percentage basis to the total raised. Mm -hmm. So um, every, every not-for-profit in the community can benefit from that. So and here's what a chance is the goal? where we can help everybody. Okay, so if you have a nonprofit, this is your chance to get involved with Community Foundation where maybe in the past you haven't been able to. So if, if you're a nonprofit, you right. can enter this. How? How do they do that? Well, you would sign up. You, you would uh, register online. It's all an online program. And uh, we have a great partner with United Way. Uh, United Way is uh, vetting all the not-for-profits, make sure everyone's a 501c3, make sure they're Patriot Act compliant. Mm -hmm. And uh, they go up on the site, they get their unique URL, mm -hmm. and when their donor makes a contribution to that, that site, um, and we're going to have, it's an online, uh, real-time, people in the community can go online and look and see where we are. We look for it to building. So this is very exciting. This is something new for the Community Foundation, time, actually. Yeah. Okay. And do you have a goal of how much you want to raise? Because um, that's always the challenge. I'm afraid to say a goal. We want to raise as much money as possible for as many not-for-profits as possible in this community. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Now, you've given away. The Community Foundation over the past 40 years have given away tons and tons of money. Let's talk about that, too. How much funding have you given away over the 40-year the 40 period that you've over been Over $100 million dollars since the beginning. So. Which is incredible. I mean, that is a legacy in itself. And where do you feel you have made the most difference? In, in what area do you feel is, is really where you made the most impact? Because you said impact is important. Impact is important. I don't know that I would say one particular area, but I think, I think um, you know, human, human needs. Right. And I, and I don't discount the arts either. I think you know, we have made, that's not as, as, as big an area, but I do think it's really important for our community. Yes, arts uh, education, education and education outreach. Education, very yes. much, yes. We agree. Obviously, on PBS, arts education is so important right. because it keeps kids engaged and it keeps them out of trouble and it also you know, keeps the legends alive. So I think that's very important yeah. as well. Do you have like a timeline of when you accept grants or how does that work? Well, the first thing I would say is every not-for-profit should be uh, registered with us. We have an online uh, catalog of all not-for-profits in the community and that's available to the entire community. So if you're a donor and you're interested in a particular uh, not-for-profit and you want to find out about their profile, you can come to our website. And if you're a not-for-profit, you should be on our website. And that would be the place to start if we were looking. We have people who've left money uh, in donor advised funds and they have particular interests and we'd go to that catalog to find the things that would actually make sense for the donors for money that we give away. And then also occasionally we'll have an open call where um, organizations can actually apply for a, a, a grant. Mm -hmm. uh, we are just closing that now for this year and I believe next fiscal year, our fiscal year ends June 30th. Okay. So after July 1st, uh, looking to the next year would be the next yeah. chance to do that. You know, when I was doing my research, I had found that Palm Beach County has different needs than Martin County. When I looked at, for example, how many children had to, the need for um, school meal programs, Palm Beach County needed it much more than Martin County. 71% um, of our students in Palm Beach County graduate from high school. 92% of the students in Martin County graduate high school. So when I was looking at that, I thought, wow, you know, here's one organization, the Community Foundation, representing Palm Beach and Martin County, very different counties. Very much so. How do you deal with the differences? Do you have a different board? How do you address the two different counties? 
Well, on the board side, we typically have at least one board member from Martin County. Uh, so that's, so we have representation there. Um, really, we partner with folks in Martin County. There's a Martin County Community Foundation that we're very close to. They're on the ground, actually more than we are, because they have someone living up there. What are some of your greatest accomplishments in the community? Like, I know the scholarship fund is just, you've done incre incredible work with the scholarships. Let's talk about that a little bit. Really, in the, especially in the early days of the Community Foundation, the scholarship uh, fund and scholarship funds was one of the first ways that the, the foundation started to grow. And someone suggested, put that with the Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. They put it with the Community Foundation, and they said, from then on, it was just a great experience. Last year, we gave about three quarters of a million dollars in scholarship funds to the Palm Beach and Martin County students. We are the largest provider of scholarship funds in, in the area. And the scholarships are for them to go on to college, or is it for, what is the scholarship funding actually the money used for? They're for beyond high school, uh, private, public, college, usually for the term, uh, three or four years, uh, depending on, on, the, on the program that they're doing. So it's a, it's a very, very comprehensive program. So if we have a, a, a person watching right now who has a child who's in need of funding for them to go on for continued education, sure. how do they go about applying for one of the scholarships? Please go on our website. Mm -hmm. We have a catalog of all scholarships available in Palm Beach County, not just ours, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and there'll be instructions on how to, how to apply, and we encourage you to do that. With the changes in South Florida, um, you and I have lived here many, many years. We've seen the challenges and the changes of our community. What would you say is the greatest challenge that you have, um, you know, being the CEO and president of the Community Foundation? I think the Community Foundation has grown very well. We're at $150 million in assets. We have grown well. We have provided, like we said before, over $100 million to the community. But I really look at it as just the beginning. Mm -hmm. The needs far outweigh what we can do. We just need to let more people know about the Community Foundation, grow the assets so that we can serve more people. Mm -hmm. The greatest challenge is really seeing so many needs and knowing we can only do so much. So really, every day, we try to do more mm -hmm. so that we can do more. We can only do so much. But with the help of our community, we can make a difference together. And do you find it challenging to get the younger generation, the younger philanthropists involved? Because I know a lot of the nonprofits are having that problem right now. We're really seeing a, a, new, a new era here. You know, when you and I got here, there were the, the, the usual names and suspects exactly. in there. <laughs> Many of them are passing on now. Yes. And we're seeing, and on our board, we have 40-year-olds and 30-year-olds. And uh, it's really exciting to see them coming on. And it's a different philanthropy today. Uh, people today are more involved in their philanthropy. Mm -hmm. They don't give to the legacy organizations that their parents gave to. Right. Just, they would just write a check and that, that was it. Now people want to know where that money is going and how that money is impacting their community. So yes. it's a really a different, it's a it different world. It is different. Yeah. But you see a bright future for the young philanthropists Absolutely. and for the Community Foundation. Absolutely. So thank you so much for your time and for the work that you're doing in our community. Thank you, Deborah. Really <laughs> appreciate it. I'll leave you with this quote from Nelson Mandela. What counts in life is not the mere fact that we lived. It is the difference we have made in the lives of others that determine the significance of the life we have led. I'm Deborah Tornabin. For more information about The Deborah Show, please feel free to contact me at 561-364-4402. Go make a difference.